All right, everybody, welcome. We are so excited. Um, we have all of our forms and we have <laughs> our fabulous broker, Jennifer, here with us today. And I know we know it is a lot. And so just understand that um, everybody is in this together, right? This is brand new for all of us, not just, you know, a few of us, it's every single one of us. And it's a lot of different scenarios to run through in our heads. So let's remember to not overthink things. And also things will be changing, I'm sure, as we, um, you know, get more into this. I have a feeling that they're going to update forms and make some revisions. And so we're just going to kind of go with the flow and do the best we can. We're always here to help you um, go through this. But Today, just know we are working on, we're working on getting our sky slope forms updated. We're working on getting the packages um, all together for you. We're working on getting the checklist up late, updated in sky slope. And we apologize, uh, but we are waiting on a third party for all of this. So unfortunately, with everything coming out delayed um, and attorneys having to review stuff, it, it's taken a little longer than we want. But Jennifer is going to start and go over the newest form, which is our listing agreement. So I'm gonna share that with everybody. So um, bear with me because, you know, Katie is our tech person and here we go. All right, All so right. everybody's aware that we are using the new listing agreement. It is ERS 20 TB. The TB is for transaction broker. Down the bottom of your forms, you will see it is dated 724. So the two big changes with that is the requirement from the settlement with NAR um, to disclose that the brokerage commissions are not set by law and are fully negotiable, okay? This is where you see down here. This so, is, make sure you are on this EB 20B of 724, okay? Sorry, go ahead. All right, so I'm sure everybody has seen these before. Obviously, one of the biggest changes is 10, which is the compensation. Um, we all know now that the compensation as of August 17th is the latest date, can no longer be displayed in the MLS. Um, most of our associations have already removed the offer of compensation. So you should see um, in ECOR, yours should be removed, Franklin Gulf County, uh, CPAR, Tallahassee is on the drop dead date. Pensacola's have long since been removed. I think they were one of the earliest. So when in doubt, if you don't see the compensation, make sure you're asking how you're going to be paid. And uh, yes, Mariah, I do think they will be removing all old forms. We should not see old forms in form simplicity at all. And we're going to make sure that they are all out of sky slope as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jan, for reading the questions. All right, I'm going to call you Vanna. So the big change is 10, right? The compensation, we have to spell out a little clearer now on how um, we are compensating. And the seller has a little bit more say in that. Do you mind if you start with eight and just- I Sure. Because that's where we start with compensation. All right. Uh, the seller will compensate broker as specified below if a buyer is procured who is ready, willing, and able to purchase the property or any interest in the property on the terms of this agreement or any other terms acceptable to the seller. Seller will pay the broker as follows. This really has not changed from the original agreement. So on A right there on line 109 is where you would put the compensation, the total amount, right? Is it five, six, 10? And then as you come down to 10 on line 142, you have some other choices now. Compensation to buyer brokers. Brokerage commission is not set by law and are fully negotiable. Seller approves the following. Check all that apply. If no option is checked, then option C is deemed to be selected. So A is seller authorizes the broker to offer compensation to the buyer's broker in the amount of, and that's your percentage. So if it's five and you're doing 50-50, that's where you would put uh, two and a half, okay? The amount will be paid from broker to buyer's broker from the compensation amount agreed to in paragraph eight. That's important because we get sellers sometimes that think they're paying, you know, seven and a half, but it does specify it comes from the total compensation. 
Okay, the next box is B. The seller authorizes the broker to offer compensation to buyer's broker from seller in the amount of, and the same thing. You put in the amount. This compensation will be set forth in a separate written agreement between the seller and the buyer's broker. So sometimes you may have a seller that wants to have a little more control over it, or he wants to offer the compensation. This is when you would use that. The seller would be offering that. It wouldn't be coming from us. And then C, no compensation will be offered to the buyer's broker. So that is if the seller has just agreed to pay us for our marketing and listing services. Of course, the buyer's broker and buyer can uh, always ask for compensation or concessions. But for the sake of this agreement, the seller is checked that they are not offering any. So do we have some questions up to this point? Okay, so that's pretty clear then for everybody. Now, remember, all of these agreements have their own modification forms, just like they did before. So if we're modifying anything on the listing agreement, date, price, terms, any of that, there is a new modification form, um, and it'll be dated similar down the bottom. Okay, the, the newer dates, the 7 2024. Okay. The differences between A and B. Okay, on A... The seller is authorizing us to pay out of the amount they have offered us, just like in an old listing agreement. Okay, that comes from us. You would use the listing broker to the buyer's broker form. If you are checking B, it is the seller that is going to be compensating. The seller authorizes broker to offer compensation to the buyer's broker from seller in the amount of. So your total compensation, if he's only paying for our services directly to us, say for argument's sake is three, then down here he would say, I'm going to pay a buyer broker two, or I'm going to pay them three. Sometimes the seller um, wants to have the control of offering that and for negotiating it. So that's when you would check that. That's a separate form. That form is signed by the seller and the buyer's broker, not by us. Okay. Okay. And there are each A and B has an additional form that we're going to have to go or that you need. So if they sign A, then you'll use the seller pays, seller pay and buyer's broker. Um, the, so they're paying us as a brokerage if we have a listing. And then we're saying, okay, we will pay the buyer's brokerage. B, like Jennifer said, this is a form that the seller will sign and the um, buyer's broker signs. That form is really to be used uh, when offer of compensation or when offer when the offer is presented. Right. And we had some questions, I think, in the chat. Look like a lot on this one. Okay. Do not see old forms. Hold on. Getting the scrolling. We don't have a mouse over here. We are required to be by the 17th to be in compliance with the, any existing law. What, what are yes, we the listings that you have, if they were dated before March of this year, there's just a notice. It really doesn't have to be signed by anybody. Um, if they were older than March 2024, the new modification actually has all the required verbiage um, that the settlement requires, stating that it's not set by law and it's negotiable and that the compensation is not to be displayed in the MLS or is no longer allowed to. The current listing agreements already have all that um, removed. So it depends on when your listing agreement was written. If you look on the new modification form, it will give you that date. And uh, we and the staff will be going through, yay staff, if you're on here, I haven't told you that, we'll be going through the listing agreements and then we'll be trying to keep up with you and let you know so you don't fall short on what you need. All right, if a seller chooses option B, when the compensation of the listing broker in section A, B two and a half or three, yes, that's correct. He's paying us and then he's paying um, the buyer broker. So it would not be coming out of our line on A. 
Um, so that is correct. Uh, somebody asked uh, me to the seller and buyer broker. No, they do not communicate directly. Seller authorizes broker to offer compensation to buyer's broker from the seller. So we're still working as their agent. They're not communicating directly, um, but it is the seller that is offering that compensation. It's not from us. And we just uh, communicate the forms to each other. We, we are the middleman there. They do not, they should not talk to each other. We still represent them and like think of them as their attorney. Okay, does, uh, do we have a preference? Well, that's an interesting question, Susan. Um, it really, the whole thing about these new agreements are transparency and that's why they've added it. Actually, a lot of the brokers around Florida requested B to be added. Um, it's, it's really a seller's choice. They can have us offer it to the listing broker if they don't want to have any um, hands in it. They can take a little bit more control and offer it. That opens the whole discussion. If there's an issue with compensation, the buyer's broker um, would actually be negotiating, complaining, um, arbitrating with the seller, not us. And then, of course, C is if they are not willing to pay anything. So right now, we're going to just kind of see what the seller preferences are. And most of the agreements we have now, A is checked, just like before, where we collect the full compensation, and then they direct us how it's to be dispersed. And we do apologize. We Because we've gone so many times round and round with attorneys, and we're all just learning. I know we said 10B uh, last week. But now we've, after further discussion, we are saying 10A is our preference. Yeah, uh, and, but the real preference is let your seller decide. Right. But realistically, you know, they're going to kind of look to us to what we're checking. Um, You're going to have very few sellers that are going to really dig deep into that. Now, one of the funny parts was one, an engineer or an attorney may check that the seller being a little bit more control, maybe that's a personality thing where the seller offers it not through us. So as we go through this, I think we'll get a little bit more understanding of um, what the consumer's perception is of the agreements. Uh, does it still go through the title company? And they do, yes. So if you have a buyer and you have an agreement for compensation from the listing broker, when you send over that contract, you need to be sending over the promise to pay. So all along the way on any um, net sheets, on any settlement statements, uh, any work that's done, it's clear that we're to be compensated and the amount. So yes, they definitely goes to the title company. And if you're working with a buyer and you have the buyer broker agreement, you need to make sure you let the lender know because there'll be a big help in saying, you know, if this buyer has to pay compensation, they can only afford up to X or Y. So all along the way, the buyer is going to understand based on what they pick and what they're qualified for, uh, you know, what their obligation may be. So make sure their lender is aware of that also. So Jennifer, can we go ahead and talk about the forms now that go along with these two? Let me share my screen again. Um, and first go look at the seller's broker to buyer's broker. Yeah, the seller's broker to buyer broker um, is just what it says. The listing uh, brokerage is agreeing to pay the buyer's broker. And obviously you have a dress in there. If you have a buyer's name that says it's optional, right? Um, the term of the agreement if left blank is 30 days, there's been a little bit of discussion about that also. You know, do you want to make it good for 10 days? Do you want to leave it the 30? Um, the buyer broker compensation is due upon sale and that buyer's broker needs to be the procuring cause of the sale, just like the rules apply now. So on this form is where you'd be filling in what we are paying the buyer's broker. And on this one, you notice it's the seller's broker and the buyer's broker. And that's who signs it, right? The broker authorized agent, which if you have the listing can be you, and then the buyer's broker or authorized agent. That's the big difference between the two, okay? This is between the listing broker and the buyer's broker. 
on the one where the seller is agreeing to pay the buyer broker, the seller signs it and the buyer's broker. So we do not sign those if it is the seller's responsibility to pay the buyer's broker. And they're laid out similar, right? You have the buyer broker name, um, the seller's name and the street address. And then you have the terms. The same thing if left blank, those terms are good for 30 days. And then on four, they'll fill in, is it a gross amount or a percentage? The seller and the buyer's broker acknowledge all of that and you're off to the races. Again, um, this would go over to the title company. And know that the seller's broker to buyer's broker this can be used, uh, you know, if you have an open house, if an agent is showing your property and they ask for commission, you can send this to them. If this is not effective until you have an effective contract on that property and both brokers have signed. It's basically the promise to pay like our MLS was. So, and remember, the compensation can't be in the MLS, but you can have it on flyers and websites and email blasts. So that was some of the conversation um, at an open house on your flyers. You can have what the buyer broker compensation is um, printed on there. I saw a funny little thing, a little meme where they wrote in the lockbox, the agent had a piece of paper that said like 3%. Yes. <laughs> so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of creative ways yeah, so you that. can have it a QR code, you can have it on a, you know, a sign right or anything like that. Yes, and Susan is correct. We just heard this today. Uh, if like, I know eCar uses Google Groups to message, like if you're messaging area 17, area 18, whatever the uh, area is, you cannot uh, mention commission in those email blasts because the Google groups are associated with the MLS. They are, they are connected. So but anything that is associated with the MLS cannot talk about commission. Everybody understands that. <laughs> yes. And nothing loaded in the document section. Right. Okay. Please. No, right. Nothing in MLS. All right. Any questions about the agreements, Chris? Compensation commission cannot be put into the agent notes after the sale. Good point. Thank you, Chris. Um, all right, so let's go and look at, and also there are modifications to all of these documents. So if you have, your seller has signed this document, there is a modification in form simplicity to modify this. As Jennifer was saying on the listing agreement, anything can be updated at any time as long as the signing parties both sign and agree to it. Right. You just have to find the right document. Right. Yes. There's a modification for everything. Here. All right. So, yeah, computer's here. Let's see. You want to talk about the uh, when to use the showing agreement, when to use? The yes, Florida Realtors released three agreements. Um, the first one, the exclusive buyer broker agreement. We are using, again, the 7TB, right? EBBA-7TB. TB means transaction broker. So those are the ones you should be using. The exclusive buyer broker agreement means just that. It mirrors a lot of the verbiage that is in our listing agreement. It has the, uh, if you notice, it's consumer now, named the brokerage. It has to have a beginning and an end date. Um, it has terms. You have to fill in the percentage amount that they would be obligated to pay. It gives a list of what we're required to do, just like the listing agreement, what we expect the consumer to do when they're working with us. And there's a few little changes on this. The retainer, if you notice on the second page on six, you can ask for a non-refundable retainer fee. So there's been a couple of uh, discussions about this. If you are blocking out a whole weekend to show a customer consumer 
that you haven't met before, you may want to put a retainer fee in. When it was really busy and you were juggling uh, multiple customers, that was really hard when somebody canceled at the list last minute um, or you had uh, referred out a buyer because you couldn't work with them. So in other areas, a retainer fee was actually pretty normal. Um, again, a lot of these forms we haven't used um, a lot in this area. We do have some who use the buyer broker agreement and have been very successful with it. The good news is everybody has to use some type of written agreement with the buyer. So it kind of levels the playing field. Now, some have asked, well, what if I want to give it back to them um, if they buy something? Yes, you can put down in the additional terms that that will be credited at the time of closing. So if they buy something, great. If they don't, you basically were still paid for your time. And then I get the question, well, if I want to charge one, what should the amount be? Well, that kind of depends, right? You would know better than I. Um, what type of property is the customer looking at? Um, do you know them? Have you worked with them before? Uh, these are things you would have to take into consideration. Have you been hunting and lining them up things and setting appointments for three months and they've canceled, you know, two or three times? You might want to put a pretty good one in there. <laughs> if they're a past customer, a VA buyer, FHA, I would probably put zero in there. So some of these you're going to have to do a case by case. Um, as always, if you need some help or you want to run something by me, um, just reach out to me and we can kind of work through that. All right, the compensation. Um, this is how we get paid. This is the contract between the brokerage and the buyer. And it's the same thing, a purchase or exchange, just like in the listing agreement, it can be a flat fee or it can be a percentage. And then you also have one if you're doing a lease if there's an option, just again, like our other agreements or other, and then you can fill in what other fees. We don't have additional fees and they really recommend you don't load up, uh, load up the buyer with junk fees. All right. So what your compensation would go in a, the percentage, and that would be 3%, 4%, whatever you're charging. Remember not to go too low. You can always come down but if you are putting two in there to make it more palatable to the buyer and the seller is offering three, you're going to have to modify that in order to be paid more than what was agreed upon. So just keep that in mind, right? You can always go down, but it's very hard to, to go up. So if you've been showing a buyer for six months and you have three and the property they love is two and a half, you can agree, you can modify this to take the two and a half or you can ask the seller to pay the difference, or you can have the buyer pay the extra half. So keep that in mind. Any questions on the compensation? All right. Anything else? I know you've all read through these multiple times, but that's kind of the big point there. Um, and remember on 12 on the last page, you'll know you have the right one when it says the brokerage relationship will act as a transaction broker. All right, so this form is we are married. We are married. And if we divorce, it could cost you some money. So keep that in mind. This, you know, this is this is the most bindable, if that's a word, um, for the buyer. The showing agreement, all right? This is where dating, we're dating. We're getting to see if we like each other. You could, these are specific to properties. You can list the properties you're showing them. Um, it still has to be for a time, right? You still have to, to list the parties and you have to have a beginning and an end date. And then you can list the properties. So if they buy any of those properties, they'll owe you some compensation unless you're being uh, paid by another party, which is generally the listing broker. It mirrors the same. You have the broker's obligation, the customer's obligation, and again, the compensation. And if you'll notice, it's laid out the same. You know, they're paying you a flat fee or a percentage. There is a non-refundable retainer. And then you have an additional terms. If you wanted to write, it would be a credit to them or any other thing like that. All the forms, if you notice, have the disclosure about commissions are net, not set by law and are fully negotiable, all right? So that's the showing agreement. The last one, just for fun, is the property pre-touring agreement, okay? 
This is just almost like a, a commission agreement that you would give to a seller. It's very simple. Um, you know, there's not a lot to it. It's, you know, maybe we talk once or twice or we had coffee. All right. So this just states, I am a real estate licensee with, so apparently they don't even know that. You would fill in the brokerage name, the customer's name, and then you would put for how many days? Or they want to look for a couple hours? Are they here for a weekend? And then it lays out again, because they're not set by law and fully negotiable, on how you're going to be paid. Then they sign that and you sign it. All of them have an arbitration clause and you can alter all of these also. So this also states that at some point, if you get to going along with them and you like each other, and remember there's some, some buyers we fire also, um, you can transition into a buyer broker agreement. So if you're just meeting people um, or say you met them at an open house and they wanna look at a few other things on the block, uh, the pre-touring agreement may work better. And then if you have a good rapport and you're going to work together, I would definitely move into the exclusive, remember, exclusive buyer broker agreement. On the showing agreement, you're only entitled to the properties that listed. They're not exclusively working with you. And on the pre-touring, it's set for a certain amount of time. So once that's expired, they're free to work with multiple agents. So be mindful of that. Do we have any questions on the buyer broker agreements? All right. That's great information. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. We're going to go into some questions. We did have some questions come in before. So we can talk through some of these things um, and... Okay, so the first question is, if I have a listing and a customer wants to make an offer and I've never seen them face-to-face, -face, do I have them fill out a buyer rep? Okay, so remember, if you have the listing and you are just opening a door or giving information to a buyer, you're working on behalf of the seller and you don't need an agreement. However, if you're going to be writing an offer for a buyer, you're going to be negotiating for them, right? You're going to be uh, setting up uh, the closing. You're going to be counseling them. That triggers your working with. You can't fall to, I'm just working with the seller. So you would need to enter into some type of agreement. In that instance, you could use the uh, showing agreement and list that specific property if they didn't want to um, work with you long time. Uh, what's Greg said? He says, wouldn't it be best to just jump right on into the exclusive buyer broker agreement? Yes, it would. And thank you for that. But, uh, but sometimes well. people don't have, they're not all as charming as you. So people don't have that warm fuzzy and they may not be willing to do that. But yes, I, I would start with the married first, you know, skip that dating and get your buyer broker agreement signs. But not all consumers are going to be comfortable signing that. Which is funny is I think we're more worried about presenting it than the consumer is about executing them because we have had no pushback. And in fact, on one, we had two and a half and the listing broker was offering three and we modified it and the buyer didn't even, we didn't bat an eye. We changed it to three, they signed off on it and on we rocked. So I think sometimes we worry a little more um, than we need to. All right. All right. Next question. If the seller is willing to pay the buyer's broker commission, does the buyer's agent need to include that in the offer? Or is an email from the list agent saying that the seller is paying the commission satisfactory? Okay. Two things. Remember the contract for sale and purchase is between the seller and the buyer. So if you are asking to be compensated and it's the seller that's paying you, not the listing broker, then you would use the seller to buyer broker's form. Now, you would want to have that before you submitted the offer or at the very least write in the additional terms, which goes against, you know, everything we've been taught, that it's contingent on the seller signing that buyer broker form so that we can be sure we're paid and that we're not harming the buyer, right? Because if we don't get paid, it would be the buyer's responsibility. So if it's a seller's broker to buyer's broker pay for commission, um, and you know, this the so 10A is what the listing agent picked, how would you uh handle that on the contract? 
that's really not part of the contract. The, the listing broker signs it and the buyer's broker. That is your promise to pay just like the MLS. Again, um, you know, some people are taking a text or an email if they're showing uh, multiple places. But before you start submitting offers, you're going to want that in writing. Because a text is not going to, it's very hard to enforce. So you don't want to bind your buyer to a contract and then not get your compensation agreement. So be mindful of that. All right. Next question. If we have a listing and a buyer's agent wants to show, do we need to ask the realtor if they have a BBA signed? No, we are not the police. It's not our job to look at their listing agreement. Um, their job is to look at their buyer broker agreement, just like they don't have the right to see our listing agreement. Now, with that said, if there's a deficit, right, that the buyers agreed to pay their agent three and the seller's offering two and a half, and they're asking for the extra half, you could, as the listing agent, ask to see that for verification. If you think for some reason the buyer's broker does not have a written agreement and you're concerned about that, remember this rule is self-policing, which means we are the people that will be tattling. Um, you can have the association ask that realtor to send in their buyer broker agreement. I see one. So do we have to have the listing agent email us the compensation agreement signed by the seller or seller's broker? I would if you are sending an offer. And let's be honest, this is fluid. You're going to have some realtors just like we do in our own company. You know, hey, John, are you paying? Yeah, it's two and a half. They shoot you a text. You rock on, right? or they send an email, or you're gonna have some that are gonna want it fully in writing. I Before you submit a written offer, you want that written agreement. That's what will be enforceable. But if you're fine with a text from your fellow realtor um, and you're gonna go on and show it and your buyer loves it, make sure you get that in writing before you submit the offer. You can make stuff contingent on that, but as the attorney says, that's a little bit slippery slow. And also, if your buyer is responsible to pay you, if you are not being paid by the listing broker or seller, they probably will want to see that in writing also before they have you submit an offer on their behalf. Um, love this question. Who's policing this? That would be your peers. So let's say uh, a buyer, you've shown them five properties, you didn't have an agreement, then buyer jumps over to another agent and they say, oh, I already saw 123 Main Street. Oh yeah, how did you see that? Do you have a buyer agreement with somebody? No, no, but you know, Betty over at Beach Properties, she showed me. Betty. Sorry, Bad. Betty. Betty. Betty would never do that. <laughs> yes, it's, it's basically self-policing. So another realtor would tell the association that somebody did not have a buyer broker agreement um, and in CPAR, you would have get a notice and you would have 24 hours to produce a written buyer broker agreement or you will be fined. So with that being said, let's remember these once we have the sky slope thing figured out and straight, it is very important within 48 hours of getting these forms that they are loaded in sky slope. So uh, for your protection. And when we get calls, we can look at them and see, but we, we do need that. We are going to need these forms uploaded. Yeah. And each association has their own penalties for violating. Um, so I'm not going to get into all of that, um, but just be mindful that there will be repercussions and some of them pretty steep. If you do not have the buyer broker agreements before you show property. Trying to see if there's any other questions that I just can't see on here. All right, thank. You. Okay. Um. Next, the agreement is talking about the exclusive right of sale listing agreement. The agreement is between seller and BHHS BPFLA. Should I add my name or just brokerage? 
the brokerage name would be in there, but I have no problem with the agent's name being on the line. You can fit them all in there. All right. Um, single. So I believe, Susan, you asked these questions. Line 154, single agent brokerage, no signatures here, correct? And then you referenced line 181. I think you were looking at a different uh, form because I'm not sure of this question. So I'll get back to you after this call. Right. Remember, we're using the transaction broker um, listing agreement. All right. Next question. When we should use compensation agreement sellers to buyers bro broker, correct? Should we go ahead and complete this form when obtaining the listing documents from the seller or will the buyer's broker initiate this document? Okay, yes, because you're going to have both. Now, what we're doing right now, and a lot of the realtors who are updating their listing agreements, they're going to they're going ahead and they're having those filled out. Okay. Now, if your listing agreement is from the listing broker to the buyer's broker, we would fill that out, and that is something myself or the listing agent would sign and send it over. If you have some where the seller is offering it, when you're getting your listing agreement, if they check 10B, then go on and have them sign the offer of compensation so you have it in your file. All right. When completing the new exclusive buyer broker agreement, could you list under 7A a 3% compensation amount? And then in 13 other terms, specify buyer broker compensation will be up to 3% of the purchase price. Then a modification may not be necessary if the compensation offered is less. All right, that's a lot of question. I'm not sure I'm understanding it. Um, you know, I wouldn't pre-print in that you would take less or a certain percentage less. You don't even um, know where you're at there. You're not sure what the uh, other uh, brokerage company or the seller is going to be offering. You can always negotiate just like we do now. So if for some reason, like I said before, um, your buyer broker agreement had three and the seller was only offering two and a half and that's all you can get and your buyer cannot pay the difference, you know, you have the flexibility to say, yes, I'll go ahead and take the the one and a half. You just modify it. Now, let's be honest, there is a modification form just like there's always been for every document, but I'm not going to be overly shocked to see a couple of scratch throughs in everybody initial like we do on some of the forms. So it has to be in writing and acknowledged by all parties, but don't get hung up on, you know, don't get hung up on the exact form. I know Jan probably doesn't like that comment. We want the exact form, but if you have to modify something on the fly, you know, line through it, initial it, have them acknowledge it, and let's rock on. So, right. uh, you know, we don't want to get too bogged down with it. We just want to make sure we're complying with the new um, rules. Yes. Uh, you know, cleaner is better in the case of forms, but sometimes there are exceptions. Um, all right. Next question. In one of my classes, it was mentioned 5B credit check was not necessary. This instructor suggested adding in other terms of the buyer brokerage agreement to have a stipulation as follows, 5B, there will be no credit check. Okay, so the forms for some reason have pre-printed in there that we can do a uh, credit check. I don't, we have never done that. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I'm not interested in getting into the lender's job. I don't know that we need to make another stipulation. Um, first of all, it says you can, doesn't mean we are. But if somebody doesn't like the verbiage, just redline through it and move on. In another class, it was suggested to add a purchase and sale agreement when representing a buyer, add a special stipulation that reads as follows. Seller agrees to pay buyer's broker a blank percent real estate commission of the total purchase price at closing. The purchase agreement when representing a buyer. No, I don't, uh, I don't think we should put, be putting that in there. And here's the thing, if the listing broker is paying the buyer's broker that's your promise to pay it doesn't go in the contract if you are asking for compensation in other words the seller says no i'm not paying it the listing broker says no we're not paying it there's only compensation enough for us and your buyer needs that then they're going to ask for some concessions right 
the concessions can be for closing costs, for the commission, you know, whatever they want to use it for, okay? That's between the buyer and seller. What protects you is your buyer broker agreement. If your buyer agreed to pay you, you can use that money towards your commission. So be careful of adding things in the contract if we're not a party to it. Now, just to muddy the water a little on today's call with one of the Florida Realtors attorney, uh, they probably will have a uh, an update, a modification, an updated form. I don't know if they're revising the contract for sale and purchase, but there will be some place to indicate that there is some compensation form to be attached. So that will really be helpful because then they know to look for it. But anything you get signed that says you're to be paid, make sure it goes to the title company. Um, if you have a buyer broker agreement, make sure that go and the buyer is paying, make sure that goes to the buyer's lender if they're getting a loan and to the title company. Don't wait till the last minute and then nobody remembers what they signed, okay? Yes, okay. This is kind of similar, but just to frame it in a different way, as a buyer's agent, if the seller is offering to pay the buyer's broker compensation, should I always include that in the additional terms of my offer? Or is the compensation form between the seller and buyer's broker something that should be submitted with the offer? Okay, two different things. If it's from the seller, right, to the buyer's broker, you're going to want to know that. That's signed between the seller and the buyer's broker. So yes, if, the, if there's no offer of compensation, you need that before you submit that offer, or you can put in the additional terms, which was frowned upon by the attorneys, um, that it's contingent on the seller executing that offer of compensation. If it's the listing broker paying you, then that's the promise to pay, as we said before. The listing broker signs it, they say what they're paying, and then we sign it. All right, next question. If we sign a buyer broker agreement with a buyer and they walk into the origin sales office, we'll say any new home sales office for this purpose, without us, um, I'm going to stop it there. Without us, do we get paid as a buyer's agent? Yes. Please inform your customers when they sign this buyer broker agreement, tell them, explain to them, we are married. If you go into these other offices, you tell them we have an agreement when you walk in. Um and then the question is previously in the past, always, you know, have your customers tell wherever they go that, that you're their agent. And that's just a conversation that you need to have with them. Um, and I'm sure that uh, Origins and the other new homes communities will ask, will, you know, put this on their check sheet. Like, do you have a buyer's broker agreement so that they know too? But it's, again, if, if your customers don't mention it and say no, then they're going to be on the hook to pay y'all if they end up buying something in one of these new home communities to pay to pay you. Yeah, so don't let that be a surprise. Remember, right. they're married to you. So if they're walking around in there and they're not saying they're married, they're cheating. And it could cost them some money because that agreement says if they buy something and you're not compensated, and I'm paraphrasing, um, you know, that they're going to owe you compensation. Um, and we as realtors, we're supposed to be asking that all along, right? Are you working with another realtor? Well, now you really need to be asking that because we're not trying to harm the consumer. So if they have a buyer broker agreement, they need to get with their realtor. Now, again, if you're working on behalf of your seller, right, and you're in an open house or, or you're doing something on behalf of the seller as marketing, of course, we're going to help them. It's our job to promote and sell that owner's property. So just be mindful of that. Um, it's not like we're going to say, get out of here. We can't let you in because you have a buyer broker agreement. You just know you're not working on behalf of that buyer. You're representing your seller. Okay. All right. The, um, if we have a buyer sign an agreement and it turns out that someone is buying with them, like a boyfriend or a mom or dad, do we make a new buyer contract? Do both parties need to sign? Well, here's the thing. If they don't, whoever signed it, if they're on that title, that contract, they're going to owe you that amount anyway. 
You can do a modification. You can do a modification to owe you, but if we're boyfriend and girlfriend and I've signed and the boyfriend hasn't and we buy something, just because he's not on it doesn't mean I don't still owe the compensation. But these, again, are questions you would be having when you would meet with any buyer, right? Even before these, who's buying? Is it the mom and the son? Is it husband and wife? Who is going to be a party to the transaction? Uh, Anna asked, is the Origins New Home Office planning to still offer 2.25% to buyer's agents? I haven't heard. That's a question for them, but I believe so. I haven't heard any differently, um, but I believe that they are. Um, let's see. Next question. Where do you find these amendments to an existing listing? Well, form simplicity is the first place I would go. Yeah, they're in form simplicity and sky slope, and they do say they're a modification to the listing agreement. I think that's exactly what they say. There's one that is just a notice. It's not a modification. It's just a notice, letting the seller know that commissions are not set by law. It doesn't alter your um, listing agreement and that the compensation is not going to be displayed. So that will cover you. Any of the newer listing agreements, they're not needed. Um, because they're, the verbiage is already in there. Jennifer, do you sign every buyer agreement? Why, yes, I do, Jan. No, I do not. I will. Um, sometimes I sign with the agent. Sometimes just the agent signs. Um, I don't have a problem with the agent signing. Uh, just make sure, you know, you have those. And if I get a call and we need to produce it, you can get it to me in a timely manner. As Jan said, we're updating um, in SkySlope the forms and the required forms. So once they're loaded in there, you know, we can pull them right out of there and send, if we have an inquiry, we can send them on, uh, proving that we have a written agreement with the buyer. And again, if you're at an open house and a buyer comes in and they want to see other properties after your open house, use a, a showing agreement or a pre-touring agreement for those. So I would keep those handy. You know, if you don't have a laptop or a tablet that you take around with you, you can just have some pre-printed copies and fill them out if you're sitting in open house and, and that happens. All right. Scenario, I represent the buyer. The seller says he will pay two and a half percent with full price offer. Of course, buyer wants to make a below asking offer, but we still want the seller to pay two and a half percent. Okay, so I know there's a little more to the question, but that's every seller of every property we've ever listed, right? The MLS is the promise to pay at two and a half, three, whatever's in there is based on full price. That's where you come into the negotiating. So if the buyer offers less, I guess they'll counter if they don't get their net. Or as we've done all along, you know, I'll take less, but I only want to pay you two. There's where the negotiation comes in. Um, you know, we can always say no and get the buyer to come up or the seller to come down. So, you know, an offer of compensation is the promise to pay. So you would just negotiate that out as, as you have all along when you submit an offer that isn't full price. And the question is, how do we make sure our compensation is not the first thing being cut by the seller when they counter? Well, again, is that the first thing now when you're submitting offers that they want to cut? Generally, no. We'll go back and forth. Maybe it's concessions. Um, maybe it's repair limits. Uh, but we alter compensation, um, you know, a lot when the, when the deal gets stuck. You know, the listing agent will say, will you take half a percent less? And I'll take half a percent less to make it work. Or sometimes it's just a dollar amount. You really need to run the numbers. Some people just take a whole percent and I'm like, it was, you know, 300 bucks on each side. Don't, you know, don't do a whole percentage. So you always have the flexibility to negotiate that, but you certainly don't have to. You certainly do not have to. All right. Next is the compensation agreement seller's broker to buyer's broker to be used when the seller has agreed to pay buyer's broker during the listing process. It is the contact seller's broker to buyer's broker be used when the seller has agreed to pay the buyer's broker. Well, the seller agrees to pay the listing broker and the listing broker pays the buyer broker, just like in the original agreements, right? You have five and then if it's two and a half. So the listing broker is paying the buyer broker. The seller is agreeing to pay a certain amount and we're disclosing in the listing agreement what we're offering 
uh, to the buyer's broker, just like before. Can buyer's agents write the contract and just ask the seller to pay buyer's agents compensation of X? Will this cause issues with financing? Well, a couple of things. I'm assuming in that point that they've uh, there's no offer of compensation to the buyer's broker. In that instance, you can ask for the seller to pay compensation. You can use the seller to buyer broker form. Um, and you can make it contingent on that. You can ask for concessions. That's what that's what will be happening, right? We're asking for concessions to the buyer, and the buyer can use those funds to to pay the commission. Now, that's the whole point of getting these over to the lender. You need to know that. Is there an issue with financing on that? Maybe. Um, but just like the VA or FHA buyer, they're not going to have a lot of wiggle room. But we've always piled some concessions on top of a list price, right? We'll pay a little more if we think it'll appraise, and then the seller will pass that through as a concession. So those instances, you'll need to be working with the buyer's lender to make sure you're okay if you're asking for a certain percentage of concessions. And if, if you want, an option is to submit the seller to buyer's broker uh, compensation agreement that you filled out requesting how much you want with the offer. You know, that's part of the negotiation. So you send it on the contract, you write C attached and you submit that. Correct. Together. You can ask for compensation and concessions, right? That's You can negotiate that. If a buyer has no agent, can I write the contract for buyer and ask my seller to pay me X for the buyer's side to me? Well, that's what your listing agreement says, right? You already get paid. Um, if a buyer doesn't have a realtor and you're going to write it and oversee it and do the walkthroughs and set up inspections, your listing agreement stipulates what you should get paid. Um, is it If it's five, do you get the full five? Sometimes I see what you put in there. If I have both sides, I'll take four. That should already be spelled out in your listing agreement. Um, most of the time, if you're if you have the buyer, it is an unrepresented buyer, right? Or they'd be working with their realtor. So that should be not be an issue as far as compensation from the seller. Yeah. All right. Question for origins. Um, when they have multiple agents selling properties for multiple builders, do we have a signed agreement with each origins agent or who would sign? Well, this is between uh, you as a buyer's agent and your buyer. So you I'm not sure the question because yeah, so, we're getting specific on to these agreements. So an agent at Origins, if you have a buyer, wouldn't sign anything because they're part of the brokerage and the customer and commission belong to the brokerage, not an agent. So I don't I'm not sure of the question. Maybe that's something we can discuss yeah. offline because it doesn't really apply to everybody on here. But it's not separate entities. It's one brokerage. So if we all work under the same umbrella, that's who's promised to pay and that's who's being paid. Yeah. Main thing is if they go in there, make sure that they tell them that they are working with you, that you are their agent. All right. This is a good one. Suggested way to handle a buyer who wants to represent themselves or one of our on one of our listings to get a better deal. Well, again, I hate to keep saying it, but we get that already, right? There's no there's no buyer realtor, so I'm coming in less because the seller won't have to pay that part of the compensation. A buyer's offer doesn't dictate what the seller agreed to pay us. That's a contract between the brokerage and the seller. It has nothing to do with the buyer. So we get that all the time when somebody wants to try to get it for a little less. I'm not saying if you had both sides in this market, again, when things are a little tighter, or not moving as fast, you can negotiate some of that out or take less, but that is not for the buyer to dictate. You need to, you know, uh, the buyer, show, tell them your value. Tell, you know, let them know how much you know this area, you know comps, you know where the schools are, you know, you know, the ins and outs and how you're going to, once you get it under contract, then what? You know, you're going to help them get the inspection. You're going to help them walk through any problems. This is about, uh, you know, selling yourself and showing your value and why. And then there's examples. There's many examples of people who have not used an agent and they've ended up paying more than having an agent who would negotiate for them. 
So um, that's a whole nother topic though. That's another class. We can have a <laughs> training session on that. Um, and yes, in Skyslope, we will uh, have a folder. We will have something so you can have like a folder for um, Bob the buyer and you can have house his uh, contract that you have with him, you, whether it's your buyer broker agreement, showing agreement, whatever. And in there, you will be able to, um, I would suggest keeping all of copying every email you've ever done or text with them. So you have a history because we know that sometimes we work with buyers for a year or so before they ever put anything under contract. But that is uh, that's coming down the pipe. So hopefully it'll be here soon. All right. I know it's a lot, it's clear as mud, um, but we do ask that you guys keep in touch with us. You know, as you run into different scenarios, okay. talk them out with us. So this way we all can learn together. And um, I'm not gonna speak out of turn, but I think Jennifer and I will be coming around to all the offices in the next week or so. And we'll be sitting down and walking through these different scenarios. Cause I know y'all are all gonna get um, just a bunch of wonderful different scenarios that we can all and listen, you know, you need to give everybody some grace, especially your fellow realtors. They're learning also. Um, they're not 100%. Every time I talk to someone from another company, they'll ask the same thing. Well, what are you doing? Are you sending it over now? Should I have told you that before you asked to show? You know, we're all uh, we're all learning. This is all new. And in every class, either I facilitated or sat in, um, there are so many questions. Um, and, and again, there's going to be some new forms coming out again. So we're all in a learning curve, and I don't think it's going to be as overwhelming as we think it is. It just sounds like That's it. That's right. That's it right. It sounds like it. Once we get the hang of it, <laughs> it'll be, you know, like everything else. It's just going to take a little while to for us to get there and get comfortable. Um, but thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank, thank you, you so much for being here and answering these questions. Y'all, Jennifer is the best. She's so educated on all this stuff. So, um Thank you guys and reach out and we're here if you need us. Thank you. I don't know if that's helping.